All right, this is Mole Podcast One, and I want to talk to you today about significant figures and uncertainty. So you should have a handout on uncertainties and significant figures. If you could find that and get that out, please. I'm not going to go over every detail in this podcast because I've already given you a sheet of information that I, I want you to familiarize yourself with. Also, I want to stress the importance of significant figures, but I don't want to obsess over them. Um, and I'll, I'll go into that as this podcast progresses. But um, my goal is for you to pay attention and be aware of significant figures. I'm also going to um, talk a little bit about calculator usage. Most students use the uh, 30XS here, so um, that's the one I personally use. So this is the one I will be going over, but I, I recommend regardless of what calculator you use to have that out as well. Um, this is when we're going to start doing lots of um, calculations and um, basically uh, calculator usage. So, all right, I want to talk to you about uh, just a few ideas. So if you could jot these down, that would be great. Um, so point number one is when I talk about significant figures, we are talking about something measured on a device. These, these are real numbers and they are based on the instrumentation being used, based on that, that ruler, based on that burette, based on that graduated cylinder, based on that analytical balance. The um, number of significant figures always includes some degree of uncertainty. Now, the details of that are in this handout, and I'll go over them a little bit with you. But essentially, you're going to be measuring that first uncertain increment. So if we look over here at this measuring device, we see uh, 155 grams, 50, 156 grams, and then we're right in between 56 and 57. So we would probably go ahead and call that 156.5 grams, okay? So um, it's right in between. Now the degree of uncertainty in this particular case is going to be your smallest increment, one gram, divided in half. So um, it's really going to be a plus or minus 0 0.5. Uh, another point I would like to make, always include this zero, all right? Th this comes from my research background, but it's just good practice, all right? that zero accentuates the fact that there is a decimal preceding that number. So please get into the habit of not doing something like this. Put that zero in front, please. All right. And uh, uh, just a little more clarification um, on basically what I've already said to you verbally. So smallest increment divided by two. In this case, it was 0 0.5 grams. And when we're using a, 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 a digital instrument, um, we're gonna have our degree of uncertainty equal to the smallest increment. For example, if we're using just our regular balances, they will read to a 10th of a gram. So we would have a plus or minus 0 0.1 grams, okay? Now, um, I want you to, again, be aware of this. Start using it. Think about it in labs. Um, think about sig figs. Think about, you know, the instrumentation. And, and just pay attention to, to some of these rules here. Okay, so for counting, I do have a, a set of four rules that I want you to jot down. And as you're jotting them down, I'll briefly go over them. Okay, but, uh, you know, keep in mind, you know, let's say you have a ruler and you're measuring the length of something as I go through these. Um, 
So all non-zero digits are going to be significant. Those are numbers you've measured. Uh, zeros between significant figures are significant. So, you know, if, if you've already determined <clears throat> what the 10th place is, say in the number 403, and you've already determined this to be zero and your units to be three, then this must be significant, okay? Um, number three, zeros to the left of non-zero numbers are not significant, 0 0.005. These are placeholders. They are not significant. So in this case here, um, we have one significant figure. Okay. All right. And lastly, zeros at the end of a number are significant only if they are to the right of the decimal. So 0 0.0050. Well, these are placeholders, but this is significant. So we would have two sig figs in this case here. Okay. Uh, so I've included this just for you to kind of, you can always get it out and look at it and say, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's how many sig figs are in that case. Um, I remember that. Or go back over and look at the rules. All right, let's, let's look at this graduated cylinder here. See if you can determine the reading here. And remember, you want to go one degree beyond. All right, so... Um, or one increment beyond, excuse me. So here we have in between 50 and 60, we have 55, 56, and again, it's in between 56 and 57, so we may want to simply call this 56.5. Okay, um, and, and what's your degree of uncertainty going to be? Well, um, in this case here, it's going to be uh, plus or minus 0 0.5, okay? Um, let me see here. Let's look at this example up here. So on this ruler here, 1, 2, um, there's an in increments of 0 um, 0.1, so one-tenth of whatever this unit might be. And so 2.5, 2.5, Okay, so it's not 2.6, but it's greater than 2.5. All right. Now, in this case here, we do not have increments between 2 and 3. So if we were to estimate this number, we would say oh, it's a little bit bigger than 2.5. So maybe 2.6, because we only, we're only going that one digit into the uncertainty, and we are uncertain. This could be 2.5, um, could be 2.7, could be 2.65. Could we don't know. So 2.6 would be our answer in that instance. Okay. Um, some rules when dealing with addition, uh, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Um, for adding and subtracting, your answer should only have as many figures as the least exact number in the problem. All right, so you're looking at, you need to know your sig fig rules, um, one through four that we've already discussed, and you need to apply those. Um, this can be determined by considering the place value of the least significant number in the problem. So let's do this one here, 246.812, uh, centimeters, and let's add to that um, 1.3 centimeters, okay? So already you should be looking at this and saying, okay, the place value of my least significant figure in the number, well, that's going to be at a, a, a tenth of a centimeter. So when you add this up, you're going to get 248.112. All right. 
but that is not the answer you would express. So paying attention to sig figs, you would, the least precise, well, that's a, a tenth, okay, right here. All right, so not a hundredth, not a thousandth, but a tenth. So you would have to accurately write this as 248.1 centimeters. Okay, so that would be your answer there. Now, if we look at multiplication and division calculations, this one's easy. Um, answer should only have as many figures, significant figures as the number. So let's do an example here. Uh, 12970.0 grams. Uh, um, let's do divided by 530.8 milliliters. So we're going to get a grams per milliliters number here. And when you do that, you get 24.4348. Four eight one five grams per milliliter. Okay, now that would be absolutely ridiculous to report this number as the answer. That would be absurd. Paying attention to sig figs, we we would come and say, okay, one, two, three, four sig figs. So I want to report my answer as twenty four point four three grams per milliliter. That would be your answer, paying attention to sig figs. Okay, so get out your calculator. Um, trust me, guys, over the years, I've run into this. No matter how often you use your calculator in mathematics or whatever, I always run into these issues. So I want to talk to you about them now so we can get this right from this point forward. Okay. These are my suggestions. When you are using scientific notation, please use the times 10 to the nth power button. Okay, so get out your calculator now, play around with it. Yes, you can use the E button, you can use other buttons, but you just really want to make sure you're using your calculator correctly because you have no clue over the years how many students are, are putting information into the calculator and it's being misconstrued the order of operations by the calculator leading to an incorrect answer even though the student conceptually understood the problem. Okay. Also, when dividing with scientific notation, I like to use the numerator denominator button. Lastly, when dividing or multiplying scientific notation, I like to use parentheses. So if there is a combination, I'll use the numerator, all three of these essentially, in one computation. So I want you to make sure um, you're doing this right. So go ahead and put uh, this, these values into your calculator. Um, these are two uh, very important values here um, that you're going to learn a lot leading to a, a, a fundamental constant in, in chemistry and physics. So go ahead and um, pop these in. Make sure that you are getting this answer um, and paying attention to significant figures. This answer is expressed in um, scientific notation as 9.647 times 10 to the negative fourth coulombs per mole. So if you are not getting this answer, put it in a couple times, um, bring your questions to class tomorrow. That's how this whole thing works anyways, and we'll get it figured out for you, I assure you. Okay, please remember that significant figures apply to measured values. These are not some fictitious set of rules that chemistry teachers like to throw at their students. I most care that you understand significant figures are based on real science, real instrumentation, measured values, all right? We do have something called exact numbers. There are 12 eggs in a dozen. There's uh, 100 years in a century. 
These are numbers called exact numbers, um, like numbers in the room. And technically, they have an infinite number of significant figures. So um, there are exact numbers. You will encounter them. But for the most part, if you're measuring it or you're working out a problem where you're given a piece of information, pay attention to sig figs and please be careful using your calculator. Please make sure you put everything in correctly and practice before the first exam. All right. So I'm asking you to get out this handout, go back through it. Um, familiarize yourself with some of the terms here. I did not go over systematic and random errors. Um, I'll go over those in class, but I do want to say this. You never want to use the t term human error. You want to say either it was a systematic error where you're getting values either too high or too low or it's a random error where you're getting values that are both too high and too low. So we are getting ready to delve into our Georgia standards of excellence, dealing with mathematics, dealing with computational thinking, and the idea of the mole. I'll see you in class. Thank you.